What's up you guys, Dr. Gooden here, and today I wanna to take you on a behind the scenes look into what it's like to be a sports scientist and a professor over the summer. I just saw the kids off to school, so now we can get into the day. Later, I have some pilot testing uh, with a couple of my colleagues, a cool collaboration with two biomechanists. You guys will see them later in the video. I have a couple of hybrid athlete training sessions and a lot of emails to answer and some YouTube videos to make for some online courses that I'm teaching. So first things first, let's get into that run. All right, here we are out on the run. Nice little recovery run today. Five or six miles, trying to keep the heart rate between 140 and 150. All this talking might throw it off a little bit, but I've been trying a new thing lately that I used to do. I mean, back to my true distance running days where I take my recovery runs actually easy. I need to establish a better aerobic base. And the only way to really get those mitochondria proliferating and increasing in size is through volume. Now later today, I do have a lift. It's going to be a heavy deadlift day. And what I try to do is sequence my recovery days, my longer, slower volumes of mileage on the days when I lift lower body because they don't really affect that ladder weight training session. They would affect the track session. So I did my track session yesterday. I do have some easy hill sprints in the second half of the run. Beautiful. All right, nearing the end of this run, just about five miles, and now is when I slow down and walk, and uh, we're gonna do some hill sprints. Right here on this bad boy, look, there's a cat crossing the road. Black cat, that's bad luck. Bad luck for the hill. I get done my physical therapy, I'll be doing that. Yes, perfect. I Not love that. Fast as you, though. <laughs> One day, maybe. Oh. Okay, I've done four or five. I always lose track when I do these. I think I've done five, but I wanted to take you guys along on this next one. So, what I do is I start down here by this shopping cart, which is conveniently marking the start of the hill. Some days I do slightly longer hills uh, with lower intensity. Today I'm doing about medium distance, about 12 second efforts at uh, what I would say is like 95% effort. So let's get into it. I always feel like such a doofus carrying the camera <laughs> while I work out, but I don't know any other way other than hiring a videographer. If you live in San Diego, hit me up. I'd love for you to come do my training vlogs. So overall, not too impactful on the recovery, but get the good leg turnover, ranges of motion at all the joints. Um, and with the hills, even though it requires more muscular effort, there's actually less wear and tear on the joints just because you're going uphill so your body has less far to fall. The impact forces are not as high as sprinting on flat ground. So that's why I do a lot of hill sprints these days since I'm carrying around all this extra body mass as you can see from my running days. My typical post-training shake is a mix of nutrient-dense foods, it's high in carbs, and fast digesting protein, and I try to throw in some of the supplements that I consistently take as well. They don't always taste that great, but at least I can take them all at once. Now before heading to the Human Performance Center later today, I was able to finish editing the video lecture that I had started at 5.30 this morning before the kids woke up. It should actually be posted now if you guys want to check it out. I think it was chapter 16 uh, from the CSCS book. Now, after exporting it, it was time to head to the lab and collect some data. All right, so it's been a pretty good day so far. I'm just heading over now to the Balboa campus, our new campus that houses the PA program, the exercise science program, the sport performance program, sports management, 
soon to be occupational therapy as well over there, masters in athletic training, basically all of our graduate programs under the umbrella of kinesiology. So heading over there to do some pilot testing. But today what we're doing is actually testing out a new force platform and motion capture setup that we are trying to rig up. You guys want to say hi hey. to the YouTube Hey, so what's up? Crowd. It's going to be one of our uh, subjects, right? You'll be your, yeah, I'll be a subject. This is Dr. Aguinaldo. And this is Josh. Lab monkey. Lab monkey, yeah. a.k.a. the so lab monkey. So we're going to and we got to do some of the lumen stuff. Yeah. Cool. All right, see you guys in there. Later. Now, I had about 40 minutes to train before the motion capture session, so I decided to squeeze in a shortened session, and I focused on the two most important components, a power movement and a strength movement. Here you can see me warming up with some light barbell movements. The first movement today was a power clean into a push jerk, hence me warming up with uh, light power cleans and light power jerks. Typically, my warm-up is pretty short. Unfortunately, that's somewhat consistent for me. When you don't have a ton of time to train, uh, it's important to focus on the most impactful part of the workout. So for me, the warm-up is just not the most impactful. Yes, it prepares you for the session, but I'm at the point where my mobility and technique is pretty much sufficient for most of my training, and it just needs a little bit of a jump start. So short three to five minute warm-ups are good. Now that said, I do tend to spend a lot of time in my down weeks doing mobility work, doing activation work, prehab work, so making sure that I stay injury free. And, uh, you know, doing this allows me to have more efficient and shorter warm-ups during, uh, during weeks when I'm pretty busy. So there you just saw a few sets of power cleans into push jerks. You can see I'm pulling from the knee from these nice cushy blocks that I can drop the weight onto. So power cleans from the knee into power jerks. I'm doing these in singles and doubles, just working up to a series of what for me are heavy sets of one and two of these movements. Here you can see a few of my top sets at 185 pounds or 84 kilograms. I, I've really enjoyed getting back into incorporating snatches and cleans and other weightlifting derivative movements into my training after taking almost two years off from them. I find that they really help to transfer weight room strength and power onto the, into running and into jumping. So really good transfer of training. Next, I worked up to a heavy single on the deadlift. Usually I would go for three to five back off sets as well, but just with the time crunch that I was in, I just went for that top single. I was pretty happy to hit this 415 uh, for a beltless single today. Lately, I, my emphasis has been on the endurance aspect of my training. So these sessions, especially working up to higher uh, percentages of my 1RM are super important for maintaining my strength through this. And with that heavy single out of the way, it was time to help out setting up for this motion capture session. Josh, you want to explain to me what you're setting up here? Uh, yeah, right now we're setting up uh, tripods to get our motion capture cameras up. Um, we got to get them to a certain height so we can get our full capture volume for everything. Uh, just setting up the lab in general. But yeah, this is the first step. How many, how many cameras do we have? Uh, we usually roll with eight, but it looks like we might have forgot a tripod, so maybe seven today. <laughs> yeah, that's okay though, it won't make a difference. Um, but yeah, yeah, usually eight. Um, and that's just so we, that, that we have redundancy, right, on all the markers? Yeah, yeah, basically we wanna ensure that we have the best capture volume, um, the best available space for the system to pick up all the markers so that we can track uh, kinematics properly, but yeah. Chris, how many weeks out are you from Worlds? I am four weeks out from Worlds in South Africa. Have you ever been to South Africa before? No, I have not. So this is the main reason that I'm <laughs> competing is so I can go on vacation. So you can travel the world. 
America's Strongest Woman So You Can Travel. Nice, there you go. And what are we looking at today with our motion capture? Um, so I'm assuming we're looking at deadlifts today. I was no, told no, to... just pretend, just know, pretend like you know what you're talking about. So Chris, we're going to be looking at deadlifts today. What are you interested in? Which variables are you excited about taking a peek at? Uh, well, I'm excited at deadlifts in general because it's my favorite lift. Um, but specifically, uh, my interest is looking at the low back uh, kinematics in elite, novice, and then some recreational lifters. And who are the novice people today? Not Josh. <laughs> not Josh? <laughs> not Josh. You don't want to use me? This guy's not a novice, is he? No. We always pick on Josh because we throw him in when we need somebody who's a novice. But he, he's getting stronger. I don't know if you knew this. He just hit 285 for eight. But conventional, I don't say I don't conventional deadlift, so that's the problem. I, I usually our deadlift, so it ah, gotcha. throws me off. And... I think my favorite one that was done with motion capture was um, Smog from uh, Lord of the or not Lord of the Rings, but uh, it Lord the of Rings. well, it's The Hobbit, you know. Oh. Yeah, it's actually good. Chris, you're like a superhero. Lift mocap. How about Kilo Girl? Kilo, Kilo Girl. Girl, I like that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is for our uh, Lumen animation marker set. It's 61 markers. Um, it covers basically the normal um, anatomical landmarks such as the medial and lateral epicondyles and styloids. Rotate this way towards, yeah. Yeah, so we're in the process of what's called camera aiming whenever we do uh, a portable setup like this. Since we're starting from scratch, we have to aim the cameras strategically so that we define our capture volume that we want. Now here you'll see Chris performing several different exercises and then resetting between each rep so that the system can recognize the joints and segments correctly. This is important because this data is actually going into a 3D motion capture database used for animation projects and video games, etc. And so this, these exercises really need to apply in a variety of situations to different avatars and characters. Now today we didn't actually end up having time to collect data for our deadlift study, uh, but we did that the next day. I'll show you guys that footage maybe in an upcoming video. Okay, you guys, it was great having you along with me today. I hope it was informative, if not even a little bit entertaining to see behind the scenes in my training and my research, what I do in a typical day as a professor over the summer when classes aren't in session, at least face to face. Now, some of you, most of you actually, who watch this channel are not subscribed yet. So now would be a great time to do so and to hit the like button on this video as well so that this content gets pushed out to more and more movement professionals and coaches and sports scientists who want to level up their coaching game. And speaking of leveling up your coaching game, if you want some uh, file downloads, other juicy coaching tools, behind the scenes, even an extended version of this video with a lot of scenes that didn't quite make the cut for YouTube. If you want all of that, if you're interested in that, head over to patreon.com and you can follow me there. You also get access to CSCS chapter by chapter study guides. I post chapter quiz question examples as well. So head over there and see if any of that content interests you. Now a huge thank you to those people who have already supported me over on Patreon. You'll see their names after this in the end credits as well. Big thanks to you guys. It helps me to keep doing what I'm doing and to share what I've been blessed to experience and blessed to learn with the rest of you. So until next time, keep moving well, living well, and teaching other people to do the same. See you guys on the next video.